Welcome to module four. This is cellular localization data. And as always in the training manual, this is page 78. Uh, it's electronically in our OneDrive file. And I can make a copy for you if you need a copy or you can print your own. So just let me know what you need. But this time I would strongly recommend uh, that you read the beginning readings on pages 78 all the way up through 80. The procedures as usual walk you through it and I'm just doing it in video form and demoing it with our notebook. But this time uh, the whole module is about finding out where your protein is in the cell, what its job is in the cell, where you could find it in the cell, questions like that. So for a lot of us, this is going to be the last module that we have to do before we kind of have a pretty good idea about what our protein could be named, what its function is, and now with the help of this module, where it does its job. So we're going to be looking in this uh, cell localization data at a bunch of stuff uh, with a few tools and we'll walk through those now. But you should read pages 78 to 80 before you start. One of the things from the reading to highlight that we're going to look for are proteins with a series of helices. So we have a tool that we're going to use, TMHMM, that's going to talk about that. And we're going to look for signal proteins or signal peptides and a couple other things as well. So I am in our notebook. I'm going to open up the KSED00010 notebook. So I'm going to go to cellular localization data. Um, I just spent a couple minutes confused because I clicked up here and I got to instructions, which are really helpful. But remember, your notebook is down here where you're entering information. So cellular localization data is where we're going to go. Just keep in mind, we've done basic info, sequence-based similarity, then we skip down to structure-based evidence and we're going to probably finish with cellular localization data because unless yours is an enzyme, there's no point doing this one. And some of these other things are uh, extras. Here I am in my notebook for cellular localization data. The first thing you need to do is a short little research on your bacteria. And for this demo, it is Chytococcus sedentarius. So if you follow this link, a control click will help you get there. And all you need to do is look up Chytococcus sedentarius. If you were doing your Clostridium botulinum, you would put that in and you would search. What we're gonna be looking for in an article is whether our bacteria is called gram positive or gram negative. And that's a staining term for when and if you ever take microbiology. Uh, but a, a gram positive bacteria has a different cell membrane and cell wall structure than a gram-negative bacteria. So on page 81, it talks about it a little bit in the training manual. Gram-positive bacteria have only a single cell membrane separating the cytoplasm from the exterior, kind of like our cells do. But gram-negative bacteria have an inner plasma membrane, an, a space between the inner membrane and then a second outer membrane. Okay, so it's like a double-membraned bacterial cell. So this is going to help us to figure out uh, some of the results we get from the tools because if it is a gram-positive bacteria you only need helices that will go over and through one cell membrane layer. But a gram-negative bacteria has to have an inner membrane go through a space that's more hydrophilic and then an outer membrane that's hydrophobic again. So there might be two sets of helices, for example. It's also going to affect the signal peptide portion of our study because secreting a protein through one membrane versus two is obviously going to be different. So our first job, find out if Chytococcus sedentarius is gram positive or gram negative. So back to PubMed, I have some results and I'm going to kind of look just kind of for general information, but I'm also going to notice that some of these say they're free. So they are going to be a little bit easier to deal with. And in this case, if I look for a complete genome sequence for the bacteria, that's probably going to talk about it. So here's a good one, just not very specific. The rest of these sound really, really nerdy because they're science studies. This one is going to hopefully be a little bit more of a global view. So if I click it, an abstract of an article in science is like a brief summary of what the uh, journal article is about. So let's check it out. Gram-positive bacterium. Okay, so if I go back to my notebook, gram stain of the microbe, I'm going to write that it's gram-positive. 
And if I feel led to do it, um, I can do, I can take anything interesting here about the organism that might help me. So I could, this would be a citation with it, I could copy and paste if I do a little citation. Copy the link and paste it. Okay, that is a citation and you should have it in there. You shouldn't just copy and paste thing. That's a bad habit. And then always save. The next thing I need, now that I know I'm gram positive, is to go to this website, TMHMM. And what you need to know before you start this tool is that it's going to be designed to look for a transmembrane helix. And a transmembrane helix, again, is going to be a hydrophobic stretch of amino acids in your protein that could very likely uh, be something that embeds purposefully into the hydrophobic interior of the cell membrane. Uh, we'll look for a signal peptide also. A signal peptide on a protein is a sequence of amino acids that would uh, tell the cell membrane to let it out, basically. And it indicates that your protein is designed to be exported out of the cell. It's not something you'd find in the bacterial cell. It's a product to be made and secreted. So if we find one of those, that's what that tells you. If we don't find either one of those, meaning we don't find transmembrane helices and we don't find a signal peptide, that's how we're going to judge at the very end of this module that that protein probably is meant to work inside the cell. It's not meant to cross the membrane and it's not meant to leave the cell. So we're going to get some powerful information and it's really good because a lot of these are very, very graphic uh, and pretty. So this is what the first one looks like, TMHMM, transmembrane helices. Okay, and it tells you exactly what we're doing. Now we need our FASTA sequence. So back to the notebook, up to the basic information. This is old hat for you. Copy, including the FASTA header. Don't get any extra spaces. Go back there, paste it in. Shouldn't have to touch it. We want to have extensive with graphics, which is the default. And then we're going to go ahead and submit and you'll get some results pretty quick. Before you make any judgments, you have to remember this is page 85 in your training manual. This particular tool only is going to be talking about transmembrane helices. It is not telling you about where the protein is. So just remember, if you don't get any helices, which as you see right here, we don't have any helices. According to this, this doesn't mean that the protein is secreted. Because remember, there's that other option. It might be something that is made for the inside of the cell, and it stays there all the time. So if you have results like this when you do Clostridium botulinum, you would say, well, there's no transmembrane helices predicted. The training manual does give you an example of a result that would indicate transmembrane helices on page 86. Just remember, it only is telling you if there's a transmembrane helix. It doesn't tell you about not being secreted out of the cell or remaining in, in the cell. That's just not part of it. So now that we have our results, we're going to snip these. Don't copy and paste. So you pull it open, new snip, and I'm going to get all of this information. Save it to your favorite place where you're finding all these things and keeping them in case you ever lose something. Go back to the notebook, and you can see I got excited and I put this in the wrong spot. The topology graph is going to come here. So I'm going to upload that in the right spot. Then you can come up and I can delete this because all I want to know here is the number of predicted transmembrane helices and there's none that are predicted. And you can see that right up on top, number of predicted TMHs, transmembrane helices, zero. So all you're doing is taking that number and saving it. So again, that just tells us we don't have transmembrane helices. That does not mean we know at this point that it's exported from the cell or that it stays inside the cell only. All we know is it doesn't have transmembrane helices, so it probably does not reside in the cell membrane. So at this point, we did that, and now co comments or observations would be just like that. I'll type it in and then you can check out what I write as an example. So again, I'm reminding myself that just because there's no transmembrane helices doesn't mean I know exactly where this thing is made. I don't know if it's secreted outside the cell or if it's made for just in the cell yet. So once I make those comments, I save it. The next thing we're going to do is look for some signal peptides. And this is just a different tool. Uh, it's control click, open it up. If you have any luck, you're going to do a FASTA, which I don't. I pasted something else. So I go back up to my basic stuff, 
and I copy and paste it again, scroll down so that I'm ready to enter it, and I put it in and I'm not gonna touch it again. Now on this one at the bottom, you have to kind of change some things or else it's gonna give you no results. So we have a bacterial protein. If we searched amongst eukaryotes for that, who knows what we're gonna find. It makes no sense though. But we did research, we know that Chytococcus sedentarius is gram positive, so we're gonna click this. Your Clostridium botulinum, your research will tell you what to click there. But we're gonna leave everything else the default that's created and press submit. This one does not take very long either, as you can see. And you're gonna see a graphical output with some C, S, and Y scores. Okay, so some quick interpretation helps you see what you are looking at. And that's on page 88 in your lab manual. A C score is a cleavage site score, and it's trying to look and predict the presence of a signal peptide cleavage site. So a signal peptide would help uh, the cell know that it's a protein to be secreted, and that signal peptide portion would be cleaved off. There's a nice picture of that on page 80, and that's why reading the background info for this module is really important. But that signal peptide is cleaved off, and then it tells the cell membrane, release this thing from the cell. So we're gonna look for those, that's your C score. The S score is the signal peptide score, which is looking for positions in the signal peptide, and the Y score is kind of combining everything together. It's averaging the C score and the S score to give a good, the, its best cleavage site prediction. So if we look at what we have here, first of all, uh, I'm back on page 88, our whole protein's not here. Signal peptides from research are at the amino terminal of proteins, so they only look at the, this program only looks at the amino terminal. It doesn't look at the whole thing, okay? So that's one thing to notice, that we only have 70 positions here, and our protein, I think, is like 500 uh, amino acids long for KSED 00010. So, in general, you're gonna kinda take a peek, and I'm on page 88, but the three scores, which you're gonna specifically look for, the mean S, the D score, and a yes or no next to the D score. So we have a no and then these numbers. So what do they mean? Okay, so the D score for one thing. The D score is the big deal, and it's gonna tell us if we have a signal peptide or a non-signal peptide. It's got to reach, our D score has to reach a threshold of 0.45 for us to consider it significant. So if you look at our results, it's got the threshold there for you, this purple line. That's just the threshold. But you can see that our D, sorry, our D is 0 0.131. The cutoff is 0 0.45 for significance. It's not a signal peptide. If it's a protein that is not secreted from the cell, then all of these should be zero, or they're gonna be close to 0 0.1. You can see when we look, they are all close to 0 0.1, if not right there already. So in general, if you get a positive result for a signal peptide, you'd have an S score up in the graph that goes high. This green bar would poke up high over here above the purple line, while at the same time, the Y and C would be low in that region. So in our case, we just don't have anything. And again, there's more evidence and discussion of this in your training manual, pages 88 and 89. And the book also includes an example of a signal peptide like you would see, and a non-example. So now we're ready to put stuff into the lab notebook. So the first thing I need, signal peptide probability. And it's just telling us, no signal peptides predicted right here. So write that in. You can put data with that. You could put this number right here, 0 0.131. That would be a good idea. Just make sure you save it. Most likely cleavage site. This is what you would fill in if you found a positive result, but you would just write, you know, something so you don't leave a blank box. And of course we want our signal peptide graph. And I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna zoom out in my browser a little bit because I'm gonna try to get everything just because, and I save it. You can stretch it, remember, with this little button over, this little not a button, whatever it is over here. Drag it so you can see your whole picture if you need to. To check it, and just save multiple times. Now lipo P, uh, the reason why in the key it's blank is because lipo P is something that is only going to apply if you have a gram negative bacteria. So you don't have to worry about it. But we're not gonna leave blanks. So there you have it. 
uh, all the way done in module four through lipo p we will do a p sort b and a phobius in the last part and then we are all done people so i appreciate your work let me know when you're done and we'll get your posters going thanks